Today we're going to make carrot timbles. So what I did the other day was I took the carrots, I cut them, I blanched them, and I shocked them. Uh, if you watch the video on blanching and shocking, it will explain how to do that. Um, what I'm going to do now is I'm going to take my food processor. Uh, when you use your food processor, you want to make sure that you lock it in place the proper way. If you look at the top or the, the, the place where the bowl is supposed to go, it says right on there, lock this way. Too many times I see people put the bowl on backwards and it doesn't lock in. It does lock in and they think that, that they have it all set the right way. They hit the button and nothing happens because they have it on backwards. There's a little dot right here and there's a little dot on your food processor. You need to make sure that those two dots line up. Put your bowl in and lock it in place. Take your blade, spin it till it goes down. Don't just set it in like this, it'll turn on. It'll shoot your blade everywhere. Make sure it goes down nice and firm. And then when you put your lid on, a lot of people the same thing. The lid's on backwards right now. You wanna make sure you put the lid on the proper way so that when you lock it into place, right, when you lock it into place, it turns on. Right? You can see right here, I'm not sure if you can see that. Right at the very bottom here, you can see where there's a little spring. And when you go like this, you can see the spring pushing it down, that's locking it into place, and then you're able to turn it on. If it's not locked in, you can hit, hit the on button all you want, and it doesn't do anything. All right. So we're going to take our carrots, we're going to put it inside. outside chance that the blade is caught up. You don't want to take the chance of cutting yourself. Take a rubber scraper and scrape down the sides. I'm not trying to make it into uh, a, a baby baby food puree. I'm trying to, to chop it up a little bit. Okay. So it's in really good shape now. It's all chopped up. What I'm going to do now is I'm going to scoop it out of my mixing or out of my food processor bowl. I'm going to put it into my measuring cup. I'm hoping this is going to give me two cups. This is a one quart container, and there are four cups in a quart. With the, uh, with the vegetable, it doesn't matter what vegetable you, you want to use. You can use broccoli, you can use cauliflower, you can use carrots. You can do a combination. You could do one layer of, of broccoli and then one layer of carrots. When you put them into the, uh, when you put them into your mixing bowl, uh, excuse me, when you put them into your cups, you put one, one different type down first, then the other different type down second, and then after you're done baking it, you have a layered layered look to your timbo. Alright, so you can see one pint is 16 ounces which equals two cups. All right, we have it just a little bit shy of that, a little bit more, get it right up to that two cups. Now the ratio for this recipe is very simple. You're going to put in, I have heavy cream, you're going to put in one cup of heavy cream. If you have two cups of product, you're going to put in one cup of heavy cream and one cup of liquid eggs. I'm gonna set this up here. I'm gonna pour this in until I get up to the three cups. All right, now we're at three cups. Then I'm gonna take my whole eggs. I'm gonna crack my eggs. Usually it's about two ounces per egg, uh, a large egg. And there's eight ounces in a cup. So that would say that usually it's about four eggs. Let's see how close it comes. That looks pretty good to me. All right, the other thing that we wanna do, when we're measuring with a liquid measurer, we wanna make sure 
that this liquid measure is on a level surface. We don't want to hold it while we're trying to measure because your hand's not going to be exactly level. The lines on the cup are going to make something, you're going to, you're going to, you're going to measure it and it's going to be level. So now I'm going to take this. What did I do with my hand? This. Now, I'm doing this gently because I know that that, that carrot is going to come plopping out. So I don't want to make a big, huge mess. Take a little bit at a time. I firmly pack that carrot in too. That's the other thing that I did not say that you should do. Make sure that, that the vegetable is packed in there nice and tight so you have two solid cups of vegetables. Okay. And I'm going to get a whisk. As Chef I would say, this is a whisk. What you do with it is whip, it's not a whip. It's a whisk. And then I'm just going to simply mix that together. We're going to add salt and pepper to taste. Now that I have my mixture seasoned, flavored the way that I want it to be, I'm going to put that into these little aluminum cups. Now this can be done in a soup cup if you don't have the aluminum cups, but I strongly recommend the, the aluminum cups. They work really, really great. And all you do is take a ladle and you want to load it up almost to the rim. Right? The other thing that I want to point out is too many times, especially with young folks, my students, they'll grab a ladle like this, or they'll grab a ladle like this. Then when they go to pour, I see them doing the limbo all the time, you know. If you hold it like you hold a pencil, you drag it across. It's a lot easier to control, and all you're doing when you're, when you're turning the ladle is just turning your wrist, not turning your whole arm. Now while I'm doing this, I will explain to you that this is going to be baked in a water bath. Now a water bath is used because if I was to put this in the oven straight away without the water bath, the outside, this is essentially, when I put it on the menu, I usually will call it a souffle. Uh, majority of the people do not know what a souffle is and they don't realize that, that, that this is not a souffle. Um, I call it that because people know the word souffle. If I put carrot timble on the menu, it tends to scare people off, so I don't usually put that on there. But with the eggs and the cream on the, uh, it mixed in with this, if I was to put this into the oven straight away at 350 without putting any of the, um, without putting any of the water inside of the pan, what would happen is the, uh, the uh, eggs would cook quickly, very quickly. They would turn into scrambled eggs and you wouldn't have a nice mixture. So I spread them out inside of my roasting pan. Now, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna put hot water inside of the pan. I've got hot water on the stove, and I turned it on before I began the process of, of pureeing the, the vegetables. So my hot water is ready to go. I've also learned through trial and error that hot water works best and makes it, 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 uh, it doesn't have to take time to, to warm up, so it goes in and it cooks almost immediately. So I preheated my oven at 350. So I'm going to put that in. I also removed the top rack of my oven because what I'm going to do is I'm going to pour this in. If that top rack is there, when I go to pour, it's awful difficult. So my hot water is ready to go. Turn off my, my heat. And then I pour it my, on, onto my wife because I like her very much. <clears throat> All right. I will pour it in and do my best not to pour it all over the oven. But if I do, hey, I'm, I'm cleaning the oven, I'm, I'm multitasking, that's good. All right, 
Now we have our water bath and we're going to close the oven and we're going to set our timer on our cell phone for 15 minutes and we're going to check it. When the top is kind of brown and they set up and they're firm, they're ready to eat. Pouring the water bath in, when I, when I had my pan here, I made sure I separated them. So when I went to pour my water in, it gave me a hole in the pan where I was pretty sure when I poured my water into the pan, it was going to stay in the pan and not splash over into the cups where they, they had the food. And inside the, the, the oven itself, you want to go about three quarters of the way up on the cup itself to, with the hot water on the outside to make sure that you cover most of the product. If it's down here, the same thing will happen like I talked about before, where the scrambled eggs will happen on the top. So you wanna make sure you cover about three quarters of, of the, the bottom of the pan, the bottom of the, of the cup, um, for each cup that's in there. And you add water until it, so it's about there, okay? Okay, so it's been about 12 minutes. Um, the timbles are setting up nicely. If I push down, they bounce back. I'm gonna cook them for a few more minutes and then I'm gonna remove them from the oven. All right, so the carrot souffles or timbles have come out of the oven. You can see they rose a little bit and the water has evaporated. Ooh, the, the thing's getting fogged up right now. But the water has evaporated and uh, I'm gonna let them sit for a few minutes. Uh, I have chicken in the oven right now. And when that gets to an internal temperature of 165, I will be pulling that out and we'll be uh, plating these up as part of our dinner. It's the minimum requirement of, of 165 internal temperature. I'm going to take my carrot timble, I'll take my knife and go all the way around the outside, making sure it's broken free from the side. My hands are super uh, sensitive, not, not super sensitive, so you may want, not want to do this, but I can pop it out like that and flip it upside down just like that, and that goes on my plate. Take my sauce for my chicken, drape it over my chicken. And a little garnish, bloop. When you cut into these, that's what it looks like on the inside. It's very light, very airy, and people eat vegetables and they don't even know they're eating a vegetable. Other thing is too is nice is to take a piece, a sprig of rosemary, stick it right in, it sticks out like a tree. It's a great presentation. They're also firm enough where if you wanted to, you could take your chicken and prop it up and use that as your base. Prop it up and give your, give your plate a little elevation. Okay, thank you very much for watching.